Welcome back to another Steel Maze Flow tutorial. I'm Coach Kristen and I have the pleasure and honor of being a Steel Maze Flow educator. Typically when I'm creating a flow, I'll start off with one movement and just focus on that and build my flow around that movement. Today's movement was focusing on a ghost flip, which I originally learned from the Flowing Dutchman a long time ago um, in one of his tutorials, but more recently saw my friend Sean P doing a reverse version of it, which I thought was very dope and I had to play with it. So today's um, flow is inspired by that. So thank you, Sean, again. And we are gonna start in our battle stance, in a tall battle stance. I get to lower my mace so that it's in a landmark number two position, lunge out to step number two lunge, and I'm gonna horizon spin that mace. So I want to make room for the tail. So I'm set, pulling the tail in towards me, sending the globe away, but I wanna actually curve my body, hinging at the hips, rounding around that mace, and then rest it on my shoulder. Once that tail is pointing to the side wall, I'm gonna change the plane of motion that that mace is um, traveling on, and I'm gonna rainbow the tail overhead. In a guillotine swing. Then I'm going to cast and scoop, and I want that mace to float. You wanna think of it, I find for me, the best place to have it float is kind of at my eye level, and I want that mace to be right in front of me. So I'm gonna cast, scoop, rotate, and float the mace. Once that mace is floating, I'm pretty much keeping that elbow extended and just letting the mace fall down to reverse the direction. So you need to redirect the momentum of the mace. So again, cast, scoop, float, redirect. Once it comes in towards you, you can pull back on that mace so that you're in um, like a mid guard position. So one more time, we just finished that guillotine swing, cast, scoop, float, and you may need to create room and space for that globe. So always be aware of where that globe is. I recommend choking up on the mace until you get comfortable with it. You don't want, obviously, that globe to come out and smack you. From here, I'm going to cast and splash water into a, passing it off into a single arm drop in 360. I want to catch that 360 overhead with my opposite hand in position three. So we need to really keep an eye on that mace. So I'm going to cast, splash water, passing it off over on my opposite side. So I'm going to grab the mace here and then go into an outside 360. And then I'm gonna spot my mace while it's coming overhead. So make sure you keep your eye on it, catching it in a landmark for over overhand grip. From here, I'm gonna release the tail and pull that mace into an inside mill, inside sword swing. So I'm tucking it under my armpit. Then I'm gonna, whatever hand the mace is in, that leg is gonna sweep out of the way so that I can pull the sword out I like to do an outside wrist roll here and then rest that mace tail on my front shoulder. From here, I'm gonna grab the globe with both hands. I'm gonna lever it over my head and then I'm gonna control the globe. So a little bit of globe control here. So you can squeeze and release to control how fast that tail is going. And I'm gonna pop the tail off my shoulder and under my back armpit. So I pop it off. I control it, you gotta move your fingers out of the way and catch it under my armpit. Then I'm going to pivot to the opposite side and then I'm gonna release that tail back and rest it again on my front shoulder. I get control the speed of the mace by putting pressure on the globe. From here, I'm gonna lever the globe back over my head and I'm gonna bring it down, resting it in a sword cradle on my back arm. And then I can just finish by sweeping that leg back to the other direction. I'm in a landmark to sword cradle. This sets us up to go on the other side. So all I'll have to do is undo my mace and slide up into that battle stance. So message me with any questions. Tag me if you try this. And always, always flow on my friends.